Welcome hey everyone, to so video. now we're outside. Um, it's about the SV-105, which is SV Bonnie's entry-level planetary and lunar camera. At $50, it's hard to go wrong with this um, in terms of giving planetary a try. I know for me, it's not something I normally do, but for $50, uh, plugged into SharpCap software, how could I say no? So, quick little unboxing, it's, you know, comes in a box, the box shipped uh, from China. It had a little bit of problems, but uh, we open it up here. Um, we will see that uh, there is a instruction manual and then plenty of packing support. Um, so it comes with a cable right here. And it also comes with, I guess, a cleaning cloth, a um, couple silica gels. And if I can get this out, the camera itself with a little uh, lens cap. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's the whole box. Um, so pretty simple, straightforward. Um, you plug this camera into uh, your computer and away you go. Why do I keep dropping things on this channel? Um, there's the USB cable here. And we're just going to go here. And uh, yeah, so that's just your standard USB cable goes into there. And it has two, one, two, uh, USB cables uh, to plug into your computer. Now, I'm going to say plug into your computer because the camera does require uh, power. And because it's actually passing raw video data to the computer, you're going to want to have it connected in as directly as you can to the computer. Um, what that means is don't plug it into the um, USB hub or whatever that you might have because it may not allow enough data transfer through or alternatively that data transfer is going to cause problems with other stuff. And to give you an idea spec wise on what this does, I think it's written here, um, it is a one third inch CMOS sensor. Uh, the sensor model is an OV2710 so pretty much a web camera uh, sensor. It's good, but it's not amazing. But again, this is $50, not hundreds of dollars or more. Um, and it is, what do we got here? So it is a 1080p uh, camera and it uh, basically is designed to go up to like half a second exposure or 500 milliseconds. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna take it out um, the next clear night and we're gonna see how it performs. Yeah, uh, it's Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and the Moon are supposed to be out tonight, so uh, I'm super happy to see if I can get them all. Uh, I can quickly tell you seeing is not the greatest starting in the evening, but I'm hoping it's going to get better um, according to uh, my weather forecast uh, so uh, websites. Over here I have, I'm using the Edge HD simply because that is the uh, planetary telescope if I were to use one. Um, the other stuff I have is very wide field, so... <laughs> um, this is obviously the choice I'm going to use. If you're using another C8 or C6, um, you're going to probably get very similar results just simply because um, you just need the big aperture and the long focal distance. Um, here is the SV Bonnie. Um, I have it just uh, directly connected in. I have a little bit of a spacer in there for the uh, back focus distance requirements. So I also have uh, some PowerMate and a uh, 3x uh, Barlow from Teleview. Um, I don't think both of them together are going to work really well, but I'll probably give those a shot. But definitely the PowerMate, I'm going to give a shot and see if I can like expand things. I think that's the limit of the scope. Um, I should probably do some uh, research uh, on that, but I'm like, meh, whatever. If I oversample, not the end of the world. Um, basically, if you go above the uh, DAWs uh, limit on your telescope, you're not actually seeing any more resolution. You're just magnifying what you have. And basically the image is going to continue to get blurrier and blurrier and blurrier, despite the fact that you're actually adding magnification. And that is completely to do with the aperture of the scope. Um, there's just simply no way to optically get around that, except to buy an even bigger aperture. So this is eight inch uh, astrograph to a $50 planetary camera with somebody who doesn't normally do planetary or lunar. So we're going to give it a go and see what we get. Um, 
I'm hoping for good results, um, but for a $50 camera, if I can get something, I'm going to be super ecstatic because I know my cameras are all designed for like long exposures, etc. Uh, they don't do well for planetary. Uh, yeah, so we're going to give this a shot. So as predicted, the seeing wasn't super great, but here is uh, some raw footage of uh, Jupiter using the SV Vani with the 5X PowerMate. I found that um, pretty much I ended up using the PowerMate pretty much the whole night because it actually um, made objects a lot bigger. And what I ended up doing was getting it to the point of where here's a raw photo um, after running through uh, the initial processing and stacking. And then, then Jupiter went into the trees and I moved on to Saturn, which was fo closely following it. And uh, here you can see here, that, again, the seeing wasn't great. Saturn was hopping all over the place, but I still managed to get a nice picture. I didn't quite get the Cassini uh, divide, but I'm going to work on that um, in my next session as I try to like dial in everything. So this is the review for the SV-105 Bonnie. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, ecstatic on how well it actually worked, considering that it's a $50 camera. Now, obviously, somebody's going to probably point out here that uh, I did plug it into like a $2,000 telescope. But yeah, uh, for this kind of thing, the Edge HD or any sort of uh, C6 or C8 telescope or Newtonian is going to perform about the same for planetary, because basically you're just using the very center of the scope to get the image and you're not trying to take a whole wide field, etc. So... Um, just keep that in mind that uh, this is a really nice scope, but uh, for planetary, pretty much anything um, is going to go. Okay, so right now uh, imaging the moon, and uh, yeah, I've gone and put uh, a five times Barlow and a three times, sorry, five times power mate and a three times Barlow on this. Just to be a little silly, I know obviously it's going to overkill uh, super sampling, but I thought I'd give that a shot as well. Uh, I also decided to do a pano, um, just finished that, uh, which I just used the five times Barlow, and I have a couple pictures with just the prime. Um, the moon and the SV Bonnie SV105 actually works out really well. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it with the uh, Edge HD. Obviously, if you have another six or eight inch uh, scope, this should work pretty well as well. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's just, it's fun to use it and see uh, detail. So that's definitely a uh, quite a bit of fun. Um, I also um, am going to uh, go and see what else I can do. So first I went for a photo of the Tycho uh, crater and that actually worked out pretty well. And I decided that uh, given the night seeing and everything else to go for a mosaic of the moon, which I have here. As you can see, I actually ended up missing uh, two spots. So if you ever decide to do a mosaic, definitely double check and do a little bit more overlap to make sure you have every piece of the moon. And this image is currently sitting at 37 megapixels. Here is a comparison to a photo I took with my Nikon Z6 to give you an idea of how well this $50 camera is holding up against a full frame camera that is approximately $3,000. Okay, so it took a little bit of hunting, but I actually got Mars. and. Like, I'll show it to you on the computer, but it actually looks pretty darn good. Um, <laughs> uh, I tried it a little earlier this evening, but the weather was not great. There was like, some clouds or like a wispy layer, and uh, the seeing wasn't great, but it sort of cleared up. So I was like, I jumped from the moon over to the Mars right now, and I'm like, ha-ha! And it actually looks really good. So I'm going to share that photo here, a couple of raw photos, and then uh, the process stacked photo, whatever um, that you normally do with these imaging. Um, and yeah, I'm just super happy with this. Uh, for like this little tiny webcam. I'm like, yay! <laughs> That's the thing. Um, I did try for uh, Saturn and Jupiter earlier in the night, um, but again, as I said, uh, seeing right after dark uh, was not great. And uh, since I have some trees to the, yeah, I guess it's the western direction. Um, uh, yeah, I can't shoot it later in the day. I may be tempted to take this or maybe the other scope, the dark sky viewing area up northern, uh, well, I guess it's north of Napanee, but in the middle of uh, Lennox and Addington uh, County where uh, there's some really nice low horizons. And uh, something you should definitely check out because I got this from Rick Wagner, uh, sent it today for the newsletter, so I'll share it in this video. But basically at the, at the end of September, you should be able to see all eight planets in the night sky in one evening. 
It's uh, pretty cool and uh, definitely something I'm going to try myself. But uh, yeah, a thanks out for to Rick Wagner for uh, making me aware of that cool uh, situation. Um, so I'll probably take this guy out and see if I can get some plants and all of them. But again, uh, this works really well with the bright planets. Um, but uh, as you get darker and darker, uh, it's not really designed for like Neptune or Uranus or Pluto or whatnot. So something to keep in mind. Um, although somebody's gonna now point out Pluto is not a planet, then there's gonna be a fight about is Pluto a planet, and then it's like okay, comment below, is Pluto a planet? Um, to which uh, then the next question is is Pluto and Chiron actually a dual planetary system? Because the gravitational center is actually outside the circumference of the planet Pluto. So they're theoretically orbiting each other rather than Chiron actually orbiting Pluto. The more you know. Anyway, I'm going to call it quits because it's getting late, it's getting breezy, and there is actually a giant rainstorm coming along. So at some point, this nice clear sky where the seeing is sort of starting to get a little worse um, is going to go uh, out the window.